But many Christians are living their life right now in a state of fear. And Jesus is the great shepherd. And one of the roles of a shepherd, especially the great shepherd, is to calm the sheep. When a sheep senses danger, they naturally begin to, to go crazy and run around. And the, sheep's, the, the shepherd's job is to calm the flock and keep them calm because he's protecting them. And I just hear the voice of the great shepherd speaking through me today to his flock for you to just relax. He's in the driver's seat and he has got you protected. You need to understand that you're under the protection of Almighty God. God has your back. Jesus knew that at any moment he could call and legions of angels would come to his protection. And those that know their God and those that are righteous and those that know that God hears when they pray, realize this, that around your life are angels guarding and protecting you. There's a hedge of fire around those that fear God. And we are not to be afraid of the terror by day or the arrow by night. We're not to be afraid though a thousand fall at our side and 10,000 at our left. It will not come near us. No plague will come near our dwelling. Psalm chapter 91. You need to understand that God is going to protect you and He is protecting in you and he has protected you. and I feel God speaking through me to you right now saying don't be afraid I have you listen to this when the children of Israel were undergoing the plagues of Egypt the Bible says in all of the land of Egypt the plagues were striking but in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were none of the plagues hit them God is able to isolate you God is able to protect you. And when the world around you is going crazy, you are under the shadow of His wings. You don't have to believe this if you don't want to, but this is how I live my life, under the protection of God. Let me read it to you from this translation. You are my defender. You are my protector. You are my God. In you I trust. Say that, let, repeat that after me. You are my defender. You are my protector. You are my God. In you I trust. People, millions of Christians have just left things too much in the air. And they say, well, you know, you just never know what God's going to do. And if it's His will, He will. And if He don't, let's pray. Well, now what did He say? I will say this. God defends me. God protects me. He's my God. He's my protector. What does that mean? If he's my protector. He protects me. Do you need to say out loud, God protects me? Yes. Are there a lot of Christians who wouldn't say that? Yes. Yeah. What would they say? Oh, I, I don't want to be presumptuous. I mean... I know he can. I know he can. I know he can. <laughs> well, that ain't enough, my brother and sister. The Bible said the devils believe in God and tremble. They know he can too. You got to believe he will. I said you got to believe he will. And as you read this psalm, you see that the psalmist is expressing that he is confessing. God will do this. God will do this. And he'll do this for me. And even if this happens, this won't happen to me. And even if that, this won't happen to me. He starts it off by saying, God is my refuge. He's my strength. He's my God. He's my protector. You need to talk like this every day and every night. You get into a situation where you're tempted to fear. It doesn't look good. You're getting a lot of bad reports. You're getting bad things. You see it on the TV. You don't go, oh my God, what are we going to do? Oh my God, oh my God. What, you, what should you say? God is my protector. He protects me. He protects my family. He's, he protects my kids. Right? God is my protector. He is my defender. He is my God. In Him, I will tr trust what? Trust that He'll do what? What you're saying? That He will protect you. Said He will keep you safe 
from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases. He'll keep you safe from all hidden dangers. That's the things that people didn't find. And from deadly diseases. He will cover you with His wings. You'll be safe in His care. His faithfulness will protect you and defend you. You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day or plagues that strike in the dark or evils that kill in the daylight. A thousand may fall beside you. Ten thousand all around you. But you will not be harmed. Well, that's a far cry from you just never know. God is my protector. He protects me. God is my defender. He is my God. And I trust Him to protect me. You have made the Lord your defender. In order to be born again, you must not only believe that God is real, that Jesus is real, that He went to the cross, that He paid His price. you got to go on and believe something else. Right? He must become your Lord. Your Savior. You confess Him as my Lord. My Savior. Well, it's the same way in every area. You must confess Him as my defender. My protector. Everybody say that loud. The Lord, Lord. is my protector. my protector. He protects me. God will put his... Uh, let me read that again. And so, no disaster will strike you. No violence will come near your home. Now let's back up. Who is this for? Let's, let's back up to the beginning of it. Who is this for? Those who say of the Lord, He is... Lord, you are my refuge. You are my defender. You are my protector. You are my God. In you I will trust. God will put His angels in charge of you to protect you wherever you go. They'll hold you up in their hands to keep you from hurting your feet on the stones. That's happened to me more than once. In Hebrews 1 verse 14, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? You are an heir of salvation. In whatever situation you are in right now, you are not alone. That should give you another level of security and comfort that your heavenly father saw it fit that you are constantly protected by beings that operate both in the spirit world and in our world. They are constantly at your side, fighting your battles Battles that you know of, battles that you cannot see, and battles that you don't even know are occurring in your life. They are busy away warring for your victory. All glory and worship deserves to go to the Lord God Almighty for the value He has placed on your life. On your life. You may have felt like you have no purpose on this world, but God created you in His image for His glory. In your own life, you don't protect things that are not valuable to you. You protect things that are. You are so valuable to God. Not because of anything you have done, not because of anything that you will do, but simply because He loves you. When you think nobody loves you, remember God loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son that you would not perish. No matter how small, irrelevant or unimportant you may feel, no matter how insignificant you may feel, you are valuable to God. And in all honesty, I would much rather be valuable in the eyes of the Lord than in the eyes of any human. You are so valuable to God the Father. You may think, but how is this possibly true? After all, I'm just a human. But Psalms 8 verse 4 says, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. 
You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Understand this. No, really take time to think this through. This was King David speaking. And he could not understand what made humans so special to God. It said he made us just a little lower than the angels. Yet they're the ones that have been sent by God to watch over us, to protect us. I don't know about you, but I know that most things that are watched over and protected have to be of some importance. They have to be valuable to someone. The Bible says he knows every hair on your head. Now honestly ask yourself, would you be willing to count every hair on someone's head if that person didn't mean anything to you? Who could sacrifice their own son for someone who means nothing to them? God knew who you were even when you were in your mother's womb. Psalms 139 says your eye saw my substance being yet unformed. He knew you then. It doesn't matter to him where you were born, what job you have, what car you drive. He loves you. He cares for you. And you are important to him. Now the amazing thing about the human conscience is this. That even if you don't believe what I'm saying, you believe what I'm saying. That even if you reject the truth of what I'm saying, there is rooted inside you a conviction which you can suppress with the years, but which is there nonetheless, which is telling you that these things are so. And this truth is the truth which the scripture will not let us forget. Things can happen so quick, they can happen so quick that your mind didn't really have a time to, to grasp it. But we've been in situations where the, it seemed like a problem, a, a disaster, destruction was imminent. Next thing you know, you're safe. You're somewhere else. You're, you're out of the way. But what happened is you got moved. The whole families, youth, individuals out in their cars or... Uh, in town and doing different things and thought, man, it looked like they were done for. Next thing you know, they're in a safe place. It's all over. That's what's happening. These angels are literally lifting and moving. And it happens faster than your mind can comprehend it. You are surrounded in Jesus' name. So if you want to receive this prayer, receive it. Father, I thank you that you hear me. And I thank you that you're well pleased at the faith of your people. Right now, I pray, God, for a hedge of protection around each of them. We look to you. God, we're not looking to, to earthly things or to mankind. We're looking to you to be our rock, to be our shelter. Father, I pray your protection around each person that's here and under the sound of my voice. Guard them. Guard their lives. Guard their kids. Guard their spouse. I pray for safety for them in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.